Hey, what's going on, folks? Larry with Pack Masters Dog Training here. I want to talk to you about pit bulls, Rottweilers, and German Shepherds. Okay, three of my favorite breeds, three of the greatest breeds on the planet, in my opinion. But I think many would agree with that. Over the years, I've seen a drastic decline in all three breeds, but especially the Rottweiler and the German Shepherd. Okay. So I want to touch on a few things here today for all you folks out there who do not yet have one, but are planning to possibly obtain yourself a Rottweiler, a Pitbull, or a German Shepherd. Or folks that maybe have one of these breeds already that don't have a lot of experience or are having some problems, okay? I'm going to talk to you individually about each breed. I'm going to give you my opinion and what I have seen and experienced for a very, very long time. And I have a lot of experience with all three breeds, all right? Let's talk about the Rottweiler first. The Rottweiler is my favorite breed and always will be my favorite breed. That's the breed that has my heart. And for me, there is nothing like owning a good Rottweiler, like no other experience in the dog world as far as I'm concerned. Their personalities are huge. Their bodies are big, powerful, and huge. They're funny. They have just great personalities, and they'll make you laugh. And here's a breed that can go from being a big clown. They mature very slowly. They're always puppy-like, but at the same time, is one of the most powerful dogs on the planet and will defend you with its life. The problem with this breed, just like many breeds over the years, is back in the 90s when it became extremely popular, everybody was breeding them. And there's a ton of bad breeding. A ton of bad breeding. I train a lot of Rottweilers. A lot of them you see, a lot of them you don't. I'm blown away by how many Rottweilers I take into my home and they're scared to go on a place board. Genetically, they're just messed up and they're not bred well. Also, when you have this powerful dog and you don't have experience with training dogs or raising working dogs, it becomes a serious liability. Homeowner's insurance is a problem. They're banned in certain places. If you have to rent, a lot of places won't rent to you if you have a Rottweiler. It's a very serious dog that has to have very good, firm, consistent training right from day one. If it doesn't, it will destroy you. I get people all the time, where can I go for a good Rottweiler? I try to steer them away from it. Because here's the thing, guys. It's my favorite breed. I love training them. But a male Rottweiler with a big personality will push you and test you like no other breed, in my opinion. And they can be very, very difficult. Okay? The last couple of Rottweilers I had were tremendous dogs. You guys know this. You've seen a lot of them. But they were horrible puppies. Very, very difficult. And it took a lot of work. And I kind of know what I'm doing with this stuff. Now, on the flip side, I've seen Rottweilers that when they come to me, I think, okay, another really poorly bred Rottweiler. You know, the nerves are crap. They're just not very outgoing. They're skittish and scared of everything. And then after a couple of weeks with me, I see the true Rottweiler. And the fact is, maybe these dogs weren't poorly bred but they go to the wrong household, all right? And when they go to the wrong household, they can't flourish. This is how they wind up. So before you get this big, powerful breed, just understand it's an extremely intelligent dog with working bloodlines, and it has to be trained daily, every day of your life, at least for those first two years when they're maturing. It's very, very important, guys very important. You can't get a Rottweiler and tie it to a tree in the backyard and think you're going to be successful. You will fail and you will fail the dog. That's my piece on the Rottweilers, my heart and soul. Okay, let's talk about the German Shepherd. Arguably the greatest dog breed on the planet. You can argue that. It can do everything. Extremely intelligent, extremely loyal, it can do multiple different activities and sports and police work and military work and protect your family with its life. But just like the Rottweiler, but probably even worse, 
has been bred to be a really crummy dog in so many of the wrong breeders' hands, okay? I train more German Shepherds by far than any other breed, and I rarely get a good one to train, rarely. I get some good ones. I have some good ones right now, but again, even the well-bred ones, if they are put into the wrong home, and they are not given a lot of training, a lot of physical and mental stimulation, they will destroy you and they will destroy themselves and it never works out well. Most of the German Shepherds I get to train at this point are very, very weak nerve, very insecure. A lot of them look like emaciated jackrabbits with giant ears. That's not a well-bred dog, guys. If you're going to get this incredible working dog, you better have some experience and you better find a breeder that's producing strong, stable, healthy dogs. And that's hard. You have to look really hard. If you're dropping four or $500 on Craigslist, chances are you're getting a shitty dog. Okay. And I have a couple that I'm working with now, ones that you guys aren't seeing because I can't fill them for specific reasons. One of them's the worst dog I've had in many years and is capable of inflicting incredible bodily harm to a full-grown man. Extremely dangerous dog. Extremely dangerous dog. And that's because it went from a working breeder, a working line breeder, to a household with people with absolutely no experience and they don't have the setup for this kind of dog. And it's exploding and imploding and it's a danger. The only reason I took it on is because if I don't, I know they'll go someplace else and I'm scared of what will happen at that point. It's a really, really tough case. Toughest case I've had in years. Extremely difficult, okay? Extremely difficult. Do not get a German Shepherd if you do not have experience and you don't have a lot of time to train and work every day and provide a lot of mental and physical stimulation for that dog. You have to understand that, guys. This dog will not do well in a home where it's crated all day long and given nothing to do or left in a backyard by itself. They don't do well by themselves. They have to be with the family and they need a lot of activity. So please stop buying these shitty German Shepherds. You're destroying one of the greatest breeds ever created. Okay, that's enough on that. Now, let's talk about the American Pitbull Terrier. Another one of my favorite breeds, the American Pit Bull Terrier, is my favorite dog to train, period. That is my favorite dog. Because no matter how bad they can be, when they give it to you, they give you everything. And they love to please. So, I get a lot of calls for people wanting me to point them in the right direction for a Rottweiler because they know my history with Rottweilers. And they're always surprised when I tell them, go down to your Humane Society and adopt a nice little pit bull. They're blown away by that. They can't believe I'm telling them that. But here's the fact, guys. These dogs, when bred properly, make tremendous pets. Much easier to deal with, for the most part, than a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd. Really great pets. If I could have any dog right now, it might be a nice little female pit bull. You know, they're just... They're perfect dogs in so many ways. They really are great dogs. And the shelters and humane societies are loaded with more pit bulls than any other breed in any location throughout the United States, okay? But again, this can be a very serious dog. And when you get a game-bred pit bull, most people have no idea what that means or what they're capable of, okay? I'm gonna give you a quick little story here and it, it's going to be filled with a, a little bit of very graphic information, but I want you to understand what I mean by this, all right? We all know the history of dog fighting with pit bulls. The people who abuse these dogs sicken me. There is no room for this in our society. It's disgusting, okay? What sickens me more is what they do with these pit bulls that aren't successful. I'm not even gonna go there. I thought about talking about that, but I don't want to because I'll say things that will get me in a lot of hot water. I've had the unfortunate experience, not in the dog training world, but how could I say this without giving too much information? I've been asked by people overseas 
in some of these Middle Eastern countries and Far East countries to look at some stuff of how they do dog fighting, especially in the Middle Eastern countries. And say, see, here we know dog fighting because of pit bulls. That's what they use for dog fights, right? Pit bulls. Well, overseas, what they do is they use all different breeds and they put the breeds up against each other. Okay, Turkish Kangles, Kangles, you know, um, Caucasian Mountain Dogs, Cane Corsos, uh, Tosa Inus, all the big, powerful fighting dogs. And they'll fight breed against breed, but they'll also do a lot of interbreed fighting, meaning different breeds going against each other, okay? And I want to explain to you one thing that I had the unfortunate experience of witnessing. And when I tell you what game bread means, in the dog fighting world overseas, the Turkish Kangal is king by far, okay? A well-bred Turkish Kangal will kill any dog of any breed very, very quickly. Don't send me arguments with that. I know this for a fact. Trust me. That is the most ferocious, powerful dog on the planet, period. The difference with these dog fighting organizations overseas, where there's a lot of other illegal activity going on, is all the other breeds will normally quit before they get killed. And the Turkish Kangal will let them live once the other dogs submit and quit. And they all do except for the American Pit Bull Terrier. It's very unfair size-wise. Turkish Kangals are big, huge, giant dogs, and normally they kill a Pit Bull very quickly. The reason the Pit Bull dies is because they don't quit like the other breeds. And so there is one thing that I saw that blew my mind, even with my experience with Pit Bulls and dogs, this really blew my mind. A few years back, this same situation I'm talking about, there was a fight between two Pit Bulls, this one pit bull was destroying the other pit bull really, really bad. Really bad. When he couldn't kill him by going for the neck, he started gnawing off the back leg. Pretty common with pit bulls. It got so bad where they did stop the fight before the other pit bull could die. And I'm sorry this is graphic, but people need to hear this. That back leg that the dog was gnawing off was hanging there almost completely off. There was nothing left to it. There was no life left in that pit bull. They broke up the fight. This is where it gets interesting and blew my mind. They separated the dogs, brought them back into the corner. The fight was over. The dog that was winning was still in good shape. The dog that was almost dead with his leg hanging there, once they took their hands off of him, bolted across the ring and attacked the dog that was killing it again even though it was close to death and the leg was hanging off. Now, some of you will get upset by hearing that and, and want to know why am I saying this? Because you have to understand what these dogs are capable of, okay? So a couple of weeks ago, I said, when you take your dogs for a walk or a client's dog, you better have something on you to defend against loose dogs running around and attacking. Very important. You know, some of you said, bring a squirt bottle. Bring something that makes noise. Do you think a squirt bottle or something that makes noise is going to stop a dog that's on its deathbed with one leg gnawed off continuing to attack? No, it's not going to. So some of you folks talk out of your ass. You don't have experience with this stuff. The Pitbull Terrier is a wonderful pet when put in the right hands and when you know a little bit of the history, okay? But just know this is a dog that was bred to fight and its instincts can be very strong. And when that happens, they don't stop with a squirt bottle, all right? Rottweilers, German Shepherds, and Pit Bulls, three of the greatest breeds on the planet, three of my favorite breeds. But you folks out there that go out and get one of these dogs, you better know what the hell you're getting into because it's not fair to the dogs. And it's real upsetting to see what's becoming of all three breeds, especially the Rottweilers and German Shepherds. Shitty breeders and shitty owners are destroying these dogs. Do your research and start learning. You better learn how to train a dog and find a reputable breeder and trainer if you plan on having any one of these three. Peace.